Hello, I'm Robin Mitchell and this is Maker.io. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the Raspberry Pi monitoring station for the IIoT sensor that we built in a previous project. Now, this project combines the hardware side of the IIoT sensor with a software side server. Now, this project is powered by a Raspberry Pi, which is being used as a local server on a local network. And the server itself, which is written in Python, uses the matplotlib library. And the reason why we use this is because we can plot some pretty cool graphs with the data that we get from our IIoT sensor. Now, before you can actually use the matplotlib, <laughs> it's a hard one to say, isn't it? Before you can use the matplotlib library on a Raspbian system, you have to do a few things. And the first thing you're going to need to do is to install the matplotlib library. And to do that, all you need to do is use the sudo command sudo pip3 install matplotlibplot. If you don't specify pip3 and just use pip, you might find that the system doesn't work. And I believe that's because it's trying to use Python 2 instead of Python 3. And why on earth someone put Python 2 and 3 together in the same operating system it baffles me. I, I imagine there's some backward compatibility code because some of it is only going to be able to use Python 2. But the fact that you have to be very careful the way you specify these instructions, you know, pip3, Python 3, pip, Python, all these different things, just Bear that in mind if you find that your um, server doesn't run or it says something like matplotlib wasn't found. Now the next step in this is to take the example code which you'll find on the project uh, article and you need to put this file onto your documents, uh, the uh, sort of the default directory, no folders. I mean, you can put them in a folder, but it's nice to keep it simple. So you put this file into the normal directory and then you can run the uh, Python program by using the command sudo python3 iiot.py. And you may notice that we specify Python 3 and not just Python. Again, because we need to make sure we're using the right version of Python. And once the server is started, you can go ahead and connect your IIoT sensor to that server and see the data being streamed live. But how does the code work? So all of the code from the previous article is recycled into this project. However, there are quite a number of changes. And the first one is that we make the sockets in this server non-blocking. Uh, now, what this means is that typically uh, with the sockets library, if you call a function such as send or receive or uh, accept, the program essentially locks up until that function has been executed. So for example, if you say uh, something like accept an incoming connection, it will sit there until a connection is accepted. Now, while this wasn't a problem in the previous project, it is quite a bit of a problem in this one because what will happen is that the GUI will freeze up and it will look like that the program has crashed when it actually hasn't. It's just been blocked on some function to do with the socket. So. The first thing we do is we make the uh, sockets non-blocking. The second thing we have done is we've actually separated the server section of the code away from the GUI code. And what we've done to do that is that we've made a separate thread. So the server runs in its own thread and has two different try blocks. So this gets a little bit complicated here. Now, because we've made everything non-blocking, when one of those non-blocking functions is called, and doesn't immediately execute or finish, it will throw an error, which would crash the entire program and stop connections or new data from being received and sorted out. So we have to put everything in try and cache blocks. Now, I don't know if this is uh, an ideal solution, but it certainly seems to work for this project. So when a non-blocking function doesn't uh, execute immediately, and then obviously because it's non-blocking, it's not gonna cause the uh, thread to, th to uh, freeze up, it immediately throws the error, but we catch the error, so the thread continues to operate. And this is done for both accepting connections to the server and receiving data. Now, the solution for getting my uh, server thread to communicate with the GUI thread is a little bit cheeky, but does seem to work. And it's something I tend to do a lot when it comes to threads. Now, there are ways of getting two threads to send and share information and variables, but I find the most trivial solution is to use an external file. The operating system itself will handle who has the ability to access files. So you can use, again, try catch blocks for file uh, communication. So when the main thread or the server thread in our situation uh, receives some data from a client, it will try and open an external file and store the data into that file. And then another thread can try and access that file and read the information and put it out. Now, this isn't ideal for situations where threads must have an absolute open line of communication and data doesn't get packed up. But in a situation like this, it works pretty well. 
Now, we don't want to plot too much data to our graph, so we have to keep the number of data plots to about 500. And so the way I've done this is by reading all the lines in a file, checking how many lines there are, and then getting rid of the top lines until the number of lines is about 500. And by doing that, you know, uh, the graph from the matplotlib library doesn't get too big. Now, the second function in this Python server is a simple animate function, and all this does is take the data from that file, which was created by the server thread, and then plots it onto a graph. So that's all we have time for today in this project video. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.